Welcome to the Stoppage Time edition of the Pitch to Pro podcast. This is a highlight reel of some of the best moments from the show so far, and every other week we will be bringing you a special five to seven minute segment featuring the best stories, tales, and moments of the podcast. And I, you know, I've actually talked to several people that are like lifetime residents here, and they're actually a little salty because the area grew beyond them. Yep too fast yeah because you know the longest time you know you you live in the south it's like oh well people like the slower cadence and i always have to check myself because you know the new yorker in me is like i'm i'm always when i drive i'm always driving like i'm like 10 steps ahead nobody here drives that way and and i get it and i and so i've had to kind of ratchet back that but but it's coming for everybody here yeah yeah. And we have to embrace it. They struggled. They have struggled with it in Atlanta and some other parts mm-hmm. of the country where we've seen just an inordinate amount of growth. Mm-hmm. But I think from a placemaking perspective, we can be w- really thoughtful here yeah. about how we want this place to be in the next 10 or 15 years. And so as we start adding um, new things like USL, like a professional soccer team, like all of the different um, organizations that are, are bringing their, uh, an office here, like uh, a brand new medical school. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, we've got James Beard nominated restaurant chefs. Yep. I mean, we got a little bit of everything. We do. So yes, while we might be in the heartland and we may be really far from the West Coast or I mean, the West Coast or the East Coast, <laughs> uh, the bottom line is that Northwest Arkansas is is really um, ready to explode. I know the beach bum in me is the one growing up in Maryland. <laughs> it's, it's, that's the the only one, thing it's the only thing I it's the only thing I miss. I it mean, is. you know, going to Oceanside or you know, going down, you know, I, Jersey Boy, you know, going to Belmar and some of these other places. That's the only thing I do miss. But I, I have to say, I've done the one mile swim around Beaver Beaver mm-hmm. Lake Dam twice with swim Oz. shout out to those guys there you go and there are a lot of opportunities for you to to, to get out and get into some bodies of water and then if if all if all else fails we've got non-stop flights to the west coast we do we have non-stop flights to the east we coast do. and we've got really cheap flights to florida yeah we do and i can drive from my house to destin because I got a heavy foot in about 10 and a half hours. <laughs> so I can get to the beach you in, can in get less there. than a day's time. Like I can wake up super early in the morning and hit the hit the beach in before the I get dinner in the afternoon. Yeah. So, yep. I mean, you so it's not there. that bad. You if can you get really there. want to do it. Because people say, oh, I just want to have the beach. Then I start asking, well, how often do you go to the beach? Because I have friends that live in L.A. Exactly. And they, they don't go. They rarely ever yeah. go. Yep. So, so that's, I, I you know, 100% agree with you. And you can still get there. It just may not be with the same frequency. But right. it's if you use it and if you even knew what you had when you were there. So yeah. I, I agree with you. That's my one thing. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. But, you know, you get there, you figure it out uh, <laughs> and get out on the lake, you know. Yeah. So get your fix. So I know you weren't a soccer guy growing up. Mm-hmm but have kind of dabbled and become one through your kids and just as an adult and Listen, everything going on. I mean, I didn't know much about it. I really didn't. I mean, I, I I mean I knew about it, but I didn't I didn't grow into understanding it. And I think once like my youngest is 13, he's been playing travel soccer at a pretty high level since he was like 8 or 9. Mm-hmm. And he was like one of those kids where he went to um, they had Oliver soccer, which they do a, like a, like a rec league mm-hmm. and he played rec league and people were like, where is this kid? What is he doing? He's, it's not fair. He's scoring all these goals. So eventually we took him out of there pretty quickly. We took him to the Comets, which is a local team. Mm-hmm. And then we ended up at FC Arkansas. Yep. Um, shout out to Steve Oliver and, and, and Logan Lamaster and all the great coaches there, Aaron Kaiser. But you know, the, the, um, I, I just, I really, I really enjoy soccer. I love it for the aspect of the team sport that it is. Mm-hmm. Cause like my son and his teammates, those kids are inseparable. Yeah. They're all phenomenal athletes for their age range, but they're also really nice, well-rounded kids Yeah, that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, mm-hmm. and, and soccer instills in them that level of, uh, you know, desire to compete, but they're not jerks. Right. And, and that's the other thing that I like. And I've seen that across the board. And, and yeah, you're always going to have your your folks in every in every sport. But yeah, soccer has really become, you know, I've gotten into the Premier League, La Liga. Um, I have my favorite teams. I'm a huge Christian Pulisic fan. We took them to the CONCACAF Gold Cup 
when it was up at um, at Sporting KC. Mm-hmm. My and and so I, and I'll share this little story, which I think you'll find interesting. My connection to soccer uh, is really through my wife, who's from Trinidad. Mm-hmm. So my wife's uncle, his name is Everald Cummings. And Everald Cummings is kind of to Trinidad what Pele is to Brazil yep. from a soccer player. Yep. And the crazy thing is, so that's that's my wife's uncle. So I kind of feel like my son has it in his blood yeah. and I've kind of gravitated towards it from there. But then when I was at Howard my freshman year and I was in the athletic dorm, um, I hung out with all of the soccer players. That yep. was the year that we lost in the na- national championship against IU. Um, but Shaka Hislop, yep. who was a goalie for Manchester United, who was also from Trinidad, who was coached by my wife's uncle. Yep. So it's that that circle it of life, that, that connection. He's now on ESPN. He is on ESPN. He's a, he's a good stuff. friend of mine. Um, but I mean, you know, so so the, yeah, I mean, I soccer, I have a I have a real affinity for the mm-hmm. sport. And and the thing that I appreciate more so than anything, and the only regret that I have is that I wished and this is where USL soccer comes in is is and the team is that I wish that I had had access to an academy for my son from an early age because right. I do believe he could have been he could have done that but I, I just was he was just too young and I wasn't traveling back and forth yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of stuff but you know it, what people don't realize here in the United States is that as like serious as football is or AAU basketball and all yeah. that. When you go to like in Germany, oh yeah. Every there's an academy everywhere. And these everywhere. kids, I mean, they get put into a program, they they get exposed to soccer and essentially and, and in most of those programs, those parents don't pay for those kids no. to go. No. They go. And the coaches tell the parents, hey, just be quiet. We'll take care of it. Yep. And you go. Here in the United States, everybody wants to say it everything and that creates challenges. But uh, I would love to see us get to more of that academy style portion of growth and training in soccer because I think it would do a huge uh, it would it would really serve us well in the country and in this country, United States. And I think that it's possible, but we need more situations like what you guys are about to do here in Northwest Arkansas. So I think what you guys are going to do is going to be a tremendous difference, um, you know, and and just. I, I, I'm really, really excited, and it may not reach my son at 13 right now, but some of these younger kids that are just being born here in Northwest Arkansas, I'm telling the parents now who want to get their kids involved with soccer, you're going to have access to something that a lot of these kids, a lot of great soccer players that have come through this this area never had access to. So I think it's important for people to recognize and realize that, and then I just think, you know, obviously just – what soccer brings together. Thank you for joining us for this stoppage time special of the Pitch to Pro podcast. If you've enjoyed the conversation, you can click watch the full episode here. Be sure to tune in next Thursday for a new episode of the Pitch to Pro podcast, the official podcast of USL Arkansas. Available on YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere you get your podcasts.